Next on the list of new adapters is the REST adapter. This new adapter shows up as WCF-WebHTTP. This new adapter allows us to use the WCF Publishing Wizard to expose a new WCF service as a REST endpoint. This new adapter also allows us to consume REST services. This can be done now with full support for interacting with the REST endpoint. There is also a rich URL mapping capabilities. This uses the BTS operation and allows us to set the method name, such as get or put, allows us to update the relative URL to be an absolute URL, and allows us to replace wildcard characters with BizTalk message context properties. We also are provided a custom WCF behavior to give us interaction with the Windows Azure storage system. One last thing to point out is that when working with the REST adapter, we shouldn't be afraid of having to create custom WCF behaviors. There's many times we're going to have to be able to manipulate the raw WCF message, and custom WCF behaviors give us great flexibility in order to do this. This has been a high-level overview of the REST adapter. For more detailed information and a step-by-step -step overview, please see Module 3. Let's take a look at a demo of how we could use the REST adapter. In this demo, we're going to query a popular DVD and Blu-ray rental service called Redbox to find all stores that are close to us within a given zip code. Redbox exposes a developer API, which I have been given access to. Let's take a look at how we interact with this API. I've navigated to the Redbox developer's website, where it outlines how to work with the REST API. Here it tells us the format of the resource URL. It tells us that this is an HTTP GET, and it outlines additional optional parameters that we can pass in. For the purposes of this demo, we're simply going to pass in a postal code and our API key and get back a list of stores that are close to that zip code. One other thing to point out here is that this is an HTTP GET, which means we don't want to send a message body. We'll see how the BizTalk adapter will help us trim off that message body in order to support the GET request. Let's jump onto our BizTalk server and finish configuring this solution. I'm now back on my BizTalk server, which is running in Windows Azure, and I've already created some helper components to help us with this solution. I already have a receive location to take in our message that's passing in a zip code. It's going to promote that zip code into a custom message context property. Let's take a look at the code that does this. Inside of Visual Studio, you can see that I have two schemas defined here. One is called check zip code, which simply passes in a zip code, and one is ps underscore overview. This is a property schema that has one value defined called zip code. By using the XML disassembler pipeline component, I will automatically promote from the checked zip code schema the value of zip code into this property schema. That will all happen automatically for me on the receive side. Let's take a look at what we need to configure on the send side in order to make the REST service call. Back in BizTalk Server Admin, let's take a look at the get local red box underscore REST send port. I've already set up and configured this send port to work for our solution, but let's take a look at the details of how I did that. I select the WCF web HTTP adapter, and then I select configure. Here is where I need to define the base address URI. In this case, it's api.redbox.com. Then, under the HTTP method and URL mapping, is where I need to find the details of how I need to further build out this address. The BTS HTTP URL mapping section allows us to supply multiple different operations within a single send port. So, if I wanted to do other operations other than simply look up red boxes by a zip code, I could use this exact same send port and simply have to build out new operations. In this case, I want all messages coming through here to use the same method and URL information. To do that, I simply don't supply a name to the operation, and every message coming through here will have this method and URL applied to it. Let's copy this information out to Notepad so we can see it better. Once it's in Notepad, you can see that the operation is going to set the method of get, and that the URL is setting stores slash postal code slash zip question mark and then our API key. We can see that we have zip defined a little bit differently. What we're doing here is telling BizTalk that we want zip to be replaced by message context properties. We would do that by using a variable mapping. 
Let's take a look at that. Back in our send port, I simply click edit under variable mapping, and BizTalk will automatically see that we have a variable defined called zip. To move a BizTalk message context property into this zip variable, we simply provide the property namespace that we saw earlier in Visual Studio and the property name, which we also saw in Visual Studio. This will ensure that when BizTalk processes this request, it will take the values from that context property and update the address URL for us. This has already been done, so let's close this window. Next, let's take a look at the binding tab. I've left all the default values here. Next, let's look at security. Since this is actually an HTTPS endpoint, we need to ensure that security mode is set to transport. On the behavior and proxy tabs, I'm leaving all the default values. What we do want to look at is the messages tab. The messages tab allows us to set outbound HTTP headers. It also allows us to specify for what verbs we do not want a BizTalk message body to be sent as part of the request. Since for the get request, there's no need to send a BizTalk message body, I simply type in the word get here. When a message flows through this system, BizTalk will see that it is a get and suppress the message body for the request. Let's go ahead and see this in action. Back on the file system, I'm going to grab my REST sample document and copy it into the end folder. Now in just a moment, I should get output in my output folder. Sure enough, I already have a message here. Let's take a look at it. You can see here that this is the store bulk list, which was returned from my REST API call. And here we can see a list of red boxes that are close to the zip code I supplied. I supplied the zip code 78732, which is a zip code here in Austin, Texas. This was a quick demo to see how easy it is to consume a REST endpoint using the new adapter in BizTalk Server 2013. For more detailed explanation of the REST adapter, please see Module 3, which is a full review of the REST adapter.